So just a quick review of last week on stewardship, just to uh, underline again, because most of us Catholics, when you hear the word stewardship, we think of money, raising money. But I talked last weekend about the idea of steward. That's what we are. We are stewards of Christ. And if you want to judge of how you're growing spiritually, think about what your opinion is about the things that, that you have. Because most of us say, you deserve that. If you, if you want to judge on how you're growing spiritually, the, the closer you are to the real message of Christ is to understand that we deserve nothing. Everything is a gift. And we're stewards of those gifts. Thomas Merton, in one of his prayers, said, Our very desire to thank you is already your gift. Our being here is already God's gift. So today we're talking about prayer, and we're starting with the gospel, about the temptations. And the, now remember in, in the scriptures, the devil is not Satan, if that might help your understanding. Satan is the personification of evil. In art and so on, the this, this Satan is usually portrayed, you know, as that little green man hiding under a bush, you know, <laughs> I'm going to get you. The devil is not Satan. The devil is, the best way that I can explain it is the devil is our fallen human nature. The devil is our weaknesses. The devil is our temptations. And we all have them just like Jesus did. And his temptations in Luke's gospel, especially today, are the three classic areas in which we are all tempted, and so was Jesus, because he possessed a full human nature. The first temptation was a temptation to satisfy our hungers. The things that ache within us. And it's not just the, uh, the, our hunger for food. It's the hunger for wealth, or for money, or material things, or the, the, our hunger for the things that we see that other people have. It's the hunger of selfishness. It's the hunger that we should trust in ourselves alone. It's our hunger for security. That's all, everything that we struggle with in our hungers. The second temptation is the, is the uh, temptation for power, to control things. We all want everything to go my way. Uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, our desire for praise. How do you feel when somebody else near you gets praise, like at work and so on? You say, well, I did the same thing. How come they didn't notice me? That's, that, that's the second temptation. And the third is the temptation for authority, status. We'd like to manipulate the situations around us. We want to even manipulate God. So many people say in their heart, you know, God, I'll, I'll be good and I'll, I'll try not to sin and I'll give my money to charity, but you better not let anything bad happen to me. And inevitably, in most of our lives, something bad's going to happen. And when that happens to people that are trying to manipulate God, they turn away. They say, God, you didn't keep up your end of the bargain. I'm out of here. That's the third temptation. We all struggle with that, with those temptations. And the temptation is, uh, it's never over. The old saying is that opportunity knocks once. But temptation bounds, bangs on the door forever. That's what we struggle with. Now, in our message series, how do you overcome that? The gospel tells us it's scripture. It's the Bible. Jesus is quoting the scriptures. And so once again, you're going to hear, read your Bibles. First of all, get a good Bible. And a good Bible is a Catholic Bible with footnotes. That's essential. And then ask yourself, most, most of you I know don't read the Bible. And that's not your fault. Because especially those of us who are older, we were taught 
We were never taught to read the Bible. Young people today are given Bibles during their confirmation uh, process. So young people today are going to grow up with the Bible. Now, the reason we don't read the Bible is the Protestant Reformation. In the 16th century, Martin Luther, you know about him, and he, he started the Protestant Revolt. So the Protestants went to the Bible. They based their religion on the Word of God. Because of that, Catholics went the other extreme, and we based our whole religion on the sacraments. That's why we don't read the Bible. A hundred years ago, people were told they were forbidden to read the Bible in the Catholic Church. Now, the last 50 years and so, we're, we're all moving closer. The Protestants are having more communion and sacraments, and we're reading the Bible more. Now, if you don't read the Bible, ask yourself why. Why don't you read the Bible? Maybe it scares you. The Bible is a scary book. Maybe you, find, you th think it's boring or confusing, and it's partly that. But that's, that's, that, that's the foundation of reading the Scriptures. And we read the Scriptures to get new ideas about God's ways. Because if we just keep doing the same thing over and over again, we're going to get the same results. So we need some new ideas. Or maybe you don't read the Bible because you think it's going to challenge you. Yes, it will. Now, the goal is to read a little bit each day. By the way, the goal is not to read the Bible from beginning to end. I often hear people say, I read the Bible from front page to last page. I immediately know they have no idea what the Bible is about. Because you don't read it like a novel from beginning to end. You just read little sections. You don't have to read the whole thing. If you want to start, read. Uh, this year we're using Luke's Gospel or Mark's Gospel and just read a paragraph every day. The, the Bible is a companion of wisdom. It's not a project or an object to get through. And we do it, as I said before, to get new ideas, new challenges. Everybody can quote the Bible. In, the, in today's gospel, even the devil quoted the Bible. And, and, and my, I'm not advocating that we all become Bible-spouting people like you probably all have relatives that spout verses of the Bible. And when they, by the way, if anybody does that, always ask them to show you the text. Get the context. A classic example is uh, money is the root of all evil. I bet you've heard that. But you know that's a misquote? Because the full text is the love of money is the root of all evil. Changes it, doesn't. Money is not evil. It's the love of money that is, leads us astray. So I'm not advocating that we become verse spouters, but to let that word of God wash over us and let it show us the way how we can become better disciples of Christ. Without that, it's just hard to grow. So get a good Bible, read a little bit every day. Not a lot, don't, over, don't overdo it, but let that wash over you, and over time, it will change our lives, always for the better. Not only to turn away from temptation, but to grow in the likeness of Christ, the likeness of unselfish love. So now if you pull out your smartphones, we want to see where we are. Uh, go to the web browser, mystelizabeth.com, M-Y-S-T, Elizabeth, E-L-I-Z-A-B-E-T-H.com. -E Click down or scroll down to survey. And the survey this week is, if you have it, it's already on your, on your uh, smartphones. Outside of Mass, I read the Bible. Almost never. A few times a month, once or twice a week, three to five times a week, daily. I can just about guess what the answers will be. <laughs> but be honest, please. Even if it makes me cry. <laughs> I'll show you the, we'll show you the results after communion. We thank you for watching the homily during the Lenten season joining in our prayerful service as we prepare for the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus. You're always welcome to join us in person.
Or if you wish, you can always visit us on mystelizabeth.com or watch us on Facebook. A blessed Lent to you. Looking forward to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus.